this is the University of Bath, the campus at the University of Bath in uh, Avon in, in the southwest of England. Uh, and here we have a, a, an experimental site uh, which we're building various buildings. There's a, a straw bale building, there's the hemp line building, there's a, a space behind us which is where we do work on dry stone walls. So we're looking essentially at natural building materials, looking at the way they behave and uh, trying to get a full understanding of their performance and uh, particularly in terms of the living experience. And so to that end, we got the Hempod, which was built in June of last year. Uh, took just, a, just over a week to build from uh, foundations to complete, so it can be done quite quickly. With some very uh, enthusiastic students to, to help me out. Uh, and then I've been filling it with sensors and measuring its performance, doing various tests on it. I've been heating it up, watching how long it takes to cool down, heating it up, watching how much energy is required to maintain a heat differential between here and uh, for the inside and the outside. Uh, <clears throat> last winter we got down to about minus five, minus six. So it was quite nice to be able to heat it up to uh, uh, 20, 22 degrees. So we had a big heat differential and we were able to measure the uh, energy performance, so that was a really useful exercise. This winter we were very lucky to have a, uh, a quite a cold winter for, for England. We went down to uh, minus four degrees centigrade uh, and we managed to heat the, the inside of the Hempod up to about uh, 20, 22 degrees centigrade and uh, we were able to have a fairly big temperature differential so that uh, we could measure the way in which it retained heat, how much energy was required to retain that heat differential. This building was actually built with um, uh, quite a thin wall, only um, 200 millimetres, which is, what, eight inches of, of wall. So wouldn't be expected to perform as well as a standard Hemp house, but it still performed pretty well, and, and it's got a a thermal performance which is in excess of the standard requirement uh, U-value that, that you would have on a standard house today uh, at around um, 0.4 whereas if you increase the thickness uh, to up to 300, 350 you'd be down at 0 0.18, 0 0.2. A U-value is 1 over R so uh, I do the math to get your American uh, insulative uh, requirements. Yeah. Is this the only research facility for hempcrete of its kind in the world? And if it is, can you state I, that for us? I, I, I'm not aware that anyone else has done anything like this anywhere else in the world. There are hemp line buildings which have been built for resale for people to live in where there, are, uh, there is some uh, research going on into thermal performance. But I'm not aware of anyone ever ha actually constructing a, an experimental building purely for that purpose. So yeah, it's pretty much unique in the world. And we've got it absolutely stuffed full of sensors so we can measure all sorts of performance, uh, both humidity and temperature. And we're measuring uh, <coughs> heat flux and uh, generally looking at the, the, the whole performance of it within the confines of a uh, quite a small building, which is obviously not typical of a, uh, of a a living house but you know we have limits to, to just how big we're able to build on this site but within those limits we've got something which is giving us some really useful fascinating data actually um, getting some lovely stuff out of it yeah and can you talk a little bit about um, why in particular this kind of testing site now what maybe is happening in, in Europe or in there's a, a, a driver in, in the UK and indeed in, in Europe to reduce uh, carbon emissions in construction. And to that extent, we at the University of Bath are looking at ways of uh, building, constructing buildings with lower carbon emissions. And one of our particular interests is in natural materials. So we're looking at uh, straw, clay, uh, hemp lime and other materials as well. Uh, the project that I'm working on, which is a three-year project, is to try and understand how hemp lime buildings perform 
and to try and, and establish uh, criteria and standards which will allow us to communicate to builders, developers, clients and the people that are responsible for setting standards of construction, try and communicate with them what the performance characteristics of a hemp line building are and how it will impact on the carbon emissions of that building. And there are two well, three really issues to do with uh, hemp lime construction. The first is that it sequesters, it stores uh, carbon dioxide in its fabric. Whereas if you're building with concrete or with bricks or whatever, you've actually had to put energy in, so you, you're uh, embodying carbon dioxide into the building. Here, yes, there's energy that you put into the construction, but the amount of carbon dioxide that it, uh, you expend in the construction activity is less than the amount of carbon dioxide that's been absorbed by the hemp lime through photosynthesis so that the net balance is that you have a, a lower carbon dioxide a lower carbon emissions significantly lower carbon emissions than a standard construction house and in fact in theory it should be negative so you've got uh, if you add, add the carbon input and the sequestered carbon the, the balance is, is below zero. So that's in the construction. And then you've got the carbon dioxide emissions in use. Now, hemp lime has uh, a fairly good uh, thermal resistance. It's um, a lot better than bricks and blocks and what have you. Probably not as good as some artificial uh, materials, but it's uh, in the, the low region. Uh, but it doesn't have the disadvantages of, of some of the artificial materials, which is that you've had to put a lot of energy into making them. So for a given thickness, say uh, 300 mil a foot in, in, in thickness, you get a, a thermal resistance which allows the building to perform very well in terms of, of keeping the heat in or, or the heat out, depending on winter or summer. Uh, so that's the one side which reduces energy cost of, of heating and cooling. One of the interesting things about hemp lime is that it absorbs and desorbs moisture. So in a hemp lime house you find that it maintains a steady relative humidity of around about 60%, even though the outside might go up to 98% down to 40%, so that'll be whacking up and down uh, according to the diurnal cycle, but inside it will stay pretty much 60% throughout. And that means that you don't need to spend nearly as much energy on uh, air conditioning because you, you've got this steady, really nice level of humidity. You also don't need to spend so much energy on ventilation because, again, if you have a a high humidity event such as uh, a shower, such as a boiling kettle, the humidity gets absorbed into the fabric of the wall and then passes through the wall into the outside and you keep this lovely uh, degree of, of, of humidity which is very comfortable for the inhabitants. In fact one of the quite interesting things is that uh, people that live in hemp lime houses report that they use less energy than that you would expect them to use for a house of a given U value. So if you have two houses side by side, one made out of brick and block with a U value of say 0.3 and one made out of hemp lime with the same U value, you will find that the one in hemp lime spends less money a year in energy on heating, cooling, ventilating than the brick and block one. The question is why? Now, that could be because uh, the walls themselves, because they're active, they, they absorb and desorb moisture, and we know that the, the way in which moisture moves through hemp lime, you get condensation and evaporation, and that creates uh, latent heat effects. And I've been able to demonstrate that you can get up to uh, 8 degrees centigrade of change in temperature of the hemp lime just through a change in humidity 
within that particular volume of hemp lime. So very significant effects from, from phase change of the liquid and, and vapour inside hemp lime. Um, it could be something to do with that. It, it could also be, and that this is also quite conceivable, and I'm developing a study to, to look at this, it could also be that instead of sticking the thermostat at 22 degrees centigrade, in a hemp lime house, to feel as comfortable, you stick the thermostat at 18 degrees. And you feel exactly the same level of comfort because of the differences in humidity levels as well. And after all, uh, after all, people will set a thermostat to make them feel comfortable. They won't set a thermostat according to what temperature is it. They'll say, I want to be comfortable. It's about that. So if, if that is a real effect, then that's also very interesting. Because ultimately, okay, you're putting less energy into it, but you're feeling as comfortable, so it's, it, it works. You're, you use less energy in that building. So that, that, that's a very interesting thing. I'm working on that at the moment. Well, we definitely want to move inside okay. so that we can talk about the specifics of the, uh, and the particulars of the, the data and the testing that you're doing. What you, you know, maybe you just talk about, you know, today we met... Well, to, yeah, to, to, today um, we, spent, we spent the day at a, a conference getting uh, people from uh, a number of different academic institutions in the UK and also from industry, from uh, architects, developers, engineers so there are about 120 people in the conference and and the focus of the conference was to try and work out ways of uh, getting low energy building materials into the market and trying to identify uh, ways of achieving that uh, looking at uh, renewable materials looking at other technologies which will allow the energy cost of construction to come down uh, and uh, we divided into four groups looking at, 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 at different aspects and my group was uh, not surprisingly renewable materials um, and we were identifying uh, the way in which we can get those renewable materials accepted by industry, by clients, by authorities, by uh, the general public uh, because one of the the perceptions and indeed realities at the moment is that a renewable material building tends to be slightly more expensive and uh, now part of that is a volume thing you know you build hundreds of thousands of houses out of bricks and blocks and you only build tens or thousands of, of houses out of renewable materials and as you build up volume so th you get economies of scale but part of it is also perception and, and, and fear. People don't like risk. And so we're trying to identify what the barriers are and trying to work out ways of, of reducing those barriers. So the project that, that this is, is a fundamental part of, the, the hemp pod is a fundamental part of, is a three-year project which is funded by DEFRA, the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, a UK government institution and supported by various industrial partners uh, that are making people that are uh, growing hemp, people that are making the binder, uh, architects, uh, builders, um, so a whole range of, of industrial support because they believe in the potential for this and the government are also very interested in it because it's a, it's a way of reducing the carbon emissions in construction and, and construction contributes well over half of all carbon emissions that are issued by the UK so it's a really really important part. The actual building of a, of a building is 9% of the carbon emissions. The running of a building is 42% of the carbon emissions of globally in, in, in the UK. So if we can reduce the carbon emissions in the building and if we can reduce the carbon emissions in the running of the house, we're going to make a very significant contribution to carbon reduction in the UK and worldwide. One other thing, so just a, a fun thing, we'll see if this works or not. So one thing we want to do is kind of 
um, retell the story of the three little pigs. So the first little pig <laughs> built his house out of straw, and the second little pig built his house out of what? How did it go? So brick. straw, and and then the wood, and and the the, the brick, brick in the yeah. end. So so it, you know if the, if the if the next evolution of the three little pigs is the hemp house. So if we just make it in kind of fun light terms, why <laughs> would the fourth little pig build his house out of industrial hemp? Can you give us kind of a little fun? Well, yeah, I mean, I, actually, I, 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 I have a little problem with the, the, the three little pig story. Um, before I worked on hemp lime, I, I was actually working on a project uh, a building with straw. In fact, the, the other building uh, uh, on this site is is a development of my research work, and the big problem with the 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 the, 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 the straw bale building was this big thing that people say, well, you know, it's a straw bale, three little pigs, it's going to blow down in the wind, it's going to burn, and all of this stuff. And you had to get over that for people to realise that actually it's a perfectly valid building material. Hemp lime, there are different problems from the, the three little pig problems and they're to do with well you know what happens if it burns down we're all going to go and get high uh, and it's a natural building material it's made out of plants it's going to burn anyway uh, it's a natural building material it's made out of plants so it's going to decay and, and all of these things are just nonsense but they are things that people have in their minds and they uh, uh, looking for reasons why it's not a good thing, but actually, uh, all of those reasons are completely invalid. And hemp lime, I can't burn it. I tried, I tried for two hours with a blowtorch. I couldn't get it to catch light. You know, it will char, but it uh, it, it it just won't catch fire. Um, it's a solid material uh, in the scheme of things. It's not as solid as bricks and blocks which is why you tend to build it with a timber frame inside to do the structural but it's you know sound enough uh, it performs extremely well hydrothermally it, more better than any other material I've come across actually uh, I am actually uh, I just uh, got planning permission from my local uh, building authority to so that I can build myself an office about this size at home because that's where I want to work. You know, it's the beautiful place to be, a beautiful place to work. There, there's a couple of developments in France where they built hemp lime houses and brick houses to the same design uh, and they to the same U value, same thermal resistance. And yet the people in the hemp lime houses have constantly reported that they use less energy than the people in the brick houses. Now, that's quite interesting and trying to get to the bottom of it is is not easy and that's one of the things I'm I'm working on but there are two possible reasons that I can think of for this uh, this phenomenon the the first is that actually the 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 hemp lime that's actually living in in this wall is an active material so it's absorbing and it's desorbing uh, moisture throughout its, its its existence, whereas brick and block are, are passive materials, they just sit there and you have a passive insulation in between. Whereas what's happening here is that there's a constant movement of moisture which is uh, associated with the fact that it's maintaining this steady level inside and so excess moisture or, or a lack of moisture, so that's, that's either feeding the inside or coming out of the inside. And whilst that moisture is moving through the wall, it uh, is moving through pore spaces within the, the hemp particles. And during that process, the moisture can be condensing and evaporating. And every time it condenses or evaporates, there is a, a latent heat effect. So it's either giving off energy or, or absorbing energy. And that effect is real, it's measurable, and it's significant. And I've managed to produce temperature effects of up to eight degrees centigrade just through changes in uh, the moisture content, changes in, in from condensation to evaporation and back again. So that is a, an area that I'm working on quite closely at the minute. 
and I'm not yet at the bottom of it, but it is quite conceivable that that, that has a real effect which is not measurable in a steady state U-value measurement, but is measurable in the sense that, that energy is not transferring through the wall and therefore you're reducing the energy demand. So that's one theory. And the, the other theory, and it might be a combination of the two, the other theory is that you feel more comfortable in a hemp lime house than you do in a, 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 a passive brick and um, block house. So you switch the thermostat to maybe 22 degrees in your, in your brick and block house to feel comfortable. Whereas in your hemp lime house, where you've got this nice steady humidity, you might actually have that thermostat down at 18. So there's a difference in the temperature setting, although the person living in it feels the same. So those are two theories that I've got, and I'm, I'm working on both of them, and I'm setting up scientific experiments to, to measure both of those things. Hemp lime. The hemp itself uh, grows very quickly, so uh, it absorbs carbon dioxide through, through uh, photosynthesis, so you've got this sequestered carbon emissions. You, once you build it into the building, it is uh, a robust material, it doesn't catch fire, it doesn't uh, it's very resistant to mold. The, the nice thing about building it with lime is that that gives a, a high pH value which, which stays in there for extended periods of time. So that makes it, it's an inimical environment, not just to mold, but to bugs, to animals. People don't, the animals don't like to live in it. So it's very resistant from that point of view. It has good thermal resistance it has this very unique and very special capability of managing the internal humidity, which is the thing that I like about it maybe the most. But all in all, it's a natural material with significant benefits both to the environment generally and to the environment that you're living in.